Let the record ref reflect. The meeting is reconvened with all members present. Rob Catanello is excused. He is across the pond. Please rise for the pledge. We have a motion for the executive minutes of September 24th. Mayor, I move that. Second. PA system's really working today. <laughs> they have been discussed in executive. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Uh, Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. May have a motion for the regular minutes of September 24th. I move that. Second. Council discussion. The changes are We had are some changes place. already submitted. Yep. All call votes. Mrs. Sukamoto. Yes. Dr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Links. Uh, Mr. Glandrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. May I have a motion for the executive minutes of October 10th? I move that. Second. Already discussed an executive. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Sukamoto. Yes. Dr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Links. Uh, Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. And a motion for the regular minutes of October 10th, 2012. Move that as amended. Second. Discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Uh, Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Welcome. Have a good crowd here today for a special moment coming up shortly. Right now, I want to um, cover a few things before we come down for some proclamations. But first of all, a happy Hanukkah to our Jewish community out there. Yesterday, we had the lighting of menorah across the street, and I want to thank all those that uh, attended that. And uh, again, since this is the last uh, meeting of the year, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all. This past Saturday, we had a very proud moment. We're getting fairly used to this, three years in a row. You probably heard the sirens going out of town around 7.30 in the morning, and the sirens coming back into town, I think it was about 1.30. Um, but our football team made it three in a row. So congratulations, I have a round of applause. And And hopefully we will get them here in a, uh, one of the meetings in the new year to recognize them as they should be multiple times. A couple other announcements. We want to recognize Bob Vogel. I think I, I just see him walk past the door there. There, look, perfect timing. And we see this board right over here. It's uh, behind Don for uh, one reason, because of uh, Don's role in that, but also Bob Vogel was recognized by the State Engineer Association for the project of the year as a engineering project completely done in-house. So, Bob, congratulations for the excellent work. <laughs> and for library news, the abatement project went very well and they reopened this morning. They were very impressed with all the work done by Jupiter Environmental. The um, painter will arrive Monday to do some restoration uh, work where the uh, asbestos abatement happened, but we're happy to have everything back and open. So um, thank you for your patience as we did the asbestos abatement for the library. We'll be uh, talking a little bit about it during our work agenda about our, the Union Beach, so we'll give you an update on that. But I do want to thank everyone that attended the meeting on Thursday to uh, hear what Madison is doing and how we can help. And over the past few weeks, we've talked about heroes in many different ways. And we have two Madison policemen that were heroes across the border, off duty, going to a social event in Jersey City when they witnessed a crime happening along the light rail. A gentleman was running away from the station, carrying his briefcase, being chased by several people. 
Officer Paul P Papa Marcos and Luis Goncalves stopped the suspects and held them in place until New Jersey Transit Police ap appeared on the scene and New Jersey City Police. So their quick action stopped the robbery and maybe even stopped more than that. So we congratulate them for their quick action. And coming closer to home, one of our great hurricane heroes recognized as our employee of the month, Fran Boardman of Planning and Zoning. And there's a title that doesn't even come in close to what she did during Hurricane Sandy. Dedicated working hours, and I've, you've heard me say it many times, and I will say it many times more, the effort she put in we almost had to have a executive order to send her home one night because the phone was still ringing and she was not going to leave. We had to pull the plug on the phones, I think, just to get her out of there. But not only answering the phones, but her patience in dealing with some of the calls in, in the early days of the recovery when people were really at stress to their max and how she helped them out. And then taking a step level, a step higher when Madison is a very special town because of our train station and our inf connection with New York, but with gas lines and a rail line that's not working, Fran would not accept that as a possibility for Madison. Uh, work put together bus rides so that we could get our New York commuters to work. And so she is well deserved of our um, employee of the month. And I think we should all give her a hand for that. Now I'm going to be uh, coming down below. When ready? Bob McDowell, and anyone else in the audience to hear to accept the proclamation on Human, human Traffic Trafficking Awareness Day. Please come forward. Human Traffic Awareness Day, January 11, 2013. Whereas human trafficking involves the coercive recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, and receipt of persons for purposes of sexual explo exploitation, forced labor, slavery, or other forms of servitude, and whereas the United Nations has estimated that 12.3 million adults and children are forced into labor, bonded labor, or forced prostitution worldwide, and whereas the U.S. Department of State has estimated annually 14,000 to 17,000 persons are trafficked into the United States, which is the disproportionate number are women and young, children, young girls, whereas many of these victims do not speak or understand English or are unable to communicate to seek rescue, and whereas human trafficking is a form of modern-day slavery and is second only to drug dealing as growing criminal industry, and whereas New Jersey is a prime location for human trafficking because of major national and international transportation and shipping corridor, and whereas New Jersey state constitution declares that all persons are nature free and independent and have certain natural and unalienable rights, and whereas the mission of New Jersey coalition against human trafficking is to end human trafficking through education, advocacy, and assistance to survivors. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, do hereby proclaim January 11, 2013, as Human Trafficking Awareness Day to raise, to raise public awareness, promote opposition to human trafficking, and encourage support to the victims of the state of New Jersey and throughout the world. I thank you for your effort. We're helping spread the word about this terrible challenge we have. I just want to say, on behalf of uh, the New Jersey Coalition Against Human Trafficking and the League of Women Voters of the Morristown area, which includes Madison, I would like to thank the mayor and the town council very much for this proclamation. I just wanted to thank Bob very much for uh, 
putting this through. Uh, it's very helpful. New Jersey, since it is a very wealthy state and it is close to the coast, uh, is probably more involved in this kind of thing than where any of us are aware of. So uh, thank you again, Mayor and Council. Appreciate it. Do we have Jim Burke in the audience? How about Darren Moran and Greg Heller of Vision Electric? Are they in the audience? And, and, and Angelo Iosa? Angelo, there we go. Obviously, we've had an ongoing theme in many of our proclamations and that is recognizing our hurricane heroes. And we still need to really truly recognize our staff for all they did. But we had many hurricane heroes that stepped up to provide support. So I won't go through the whereases that will bring back awful memories of Sandy because we know the impact it had in Madison. But I do want to recognize the. I'll start midway through here. I'll start with the uh, Vision Electric, whereas borough employees were supported in the restoration work by Darren Moran and Greg Heller of Vision Electric, who from the second day after the storm assisted in disassembling and down the down wires and poles from damaged and de-energized areas of the town, thereby allowing public works to begin clearing down trees. And whereas these employees of Vision Electric also performed visual inspections of certain areas and secured down residential service wires to expedite the re-energizing the borough's electric circuits. And whereas for the next week, George Belling, Bruno Fierro, Greg Heller, and Darren Moran of Vision Electric assisted the borough by working to reattach and re-energize approximately seven residential services. And whereas Angelo Iosa, the owner of Vision Electric, and his daughter Catherine volunteered their assistance by preceding the crews to, to determine if work could be performed by employees of Vision Electric or if Madison Electric was, utility was required. Now therefore I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of the borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby extend thanks and appreciation to the employees of Vision Electric for their hard work and dedicated efforts in restoring power to the residents of the borough of Madison. In recognition of Jim Burke, whereas the borough employees were supported in the restoration work by Jim Burke of Burke Electric, who from the second day after the storm assisted in disassembling and down, the de down wires and poles from damaged and de-energized areas of the town, allowing DPW to begin clearing down trees, and whereas Jim Burke also performed visual inspections of certain areas and secured down residential service wires to expedite the re-energizing of the borough's electric circuits, and whereas for the next week, Jim Burke assisted the borough by working to reattach and re-energize in approximately 70 residential services. Now therefore I, Robert H. Connolly, the mayor of the borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby extend thanks and appreciation to Jim Burke for his hard work and dedicated efforts in restoring power to the residents of the borough of Madison. And this has become a great story, whether it's uh, Eyewitness News or NPR, the success that Madison has provided, as you see Mike Piano right here, this was a truly a, a team effort and we, a proud time for Madison. So I thank everyone that made this happen so quickly. Tomorrow. Yes, thank you. Um, first, the report yeah. Mayor, do you want oh, to we'll, we'll hold. Thank you all for joining us in recognizing Don's contributions to the borough. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, take, take the time to shake hands.
Okay. Public safety, Mr. Komodo. Yeah, thank you. Um, first, a report from the police department. The police department in the month of November answered over 2,200 calls for service. Um, the officers responded to and investigated 48 motor vehicle crashes, 18 suspicious incidents, 14 suspicious motor vehicles, 11 suspicious persons for theft, larcenies, three burglaries, three assaults, nine domestic violence calls. The department also issued 178 summonses and made 13 arrests, including five narcotics, two warrant, two domestic violence, two burglary, two assault, and one trespassing arrests. Madison officers responded to 143 alarm activations and conducted 482 various premise and welfare checks. So far this year, the department answered over 25,000 calls for service, responded to and investigated over 400 motor vehicle crashes, made 215 arrests, including 26 DWIs, and responded to over 900 medical emergencies. In November, the Madison PBA collected almost 1,000 pounds of food for the Interfaith Food Pantry of Morris County. The Madison Police Department is again holding its annual Toys for Tots toy drive. Please consider dropping off your donations in the lobby of the police headquarters. Report from the fire department. The fire department would like to thank our neighboring communities for their help and assistance with recent fires as well as pointing out that um, we have given aids to our neighbors as well. Um, in the Park Avenue fire event in November, we received mutual aid assistance from Florham Park, Chatham Borough, Morris Township, Cedar Nose, um, Morristown, Chatham Township, Green Village, East Hanover, New Vernon, Morris Plains, and also Morris County Fire Coordinator. We received mutual aid and assistance for the Hunter Drive fire in November as well from Florham Park, Chatham Borough, Morris Township, Cedar Nose, Green Village, New Vernon, and also Morris County fire coordinators. We have also given mutual aid assistance over the same period to the following fire departments. Florham Park for a structure fire, Florham Park again in December for office fire, Morristown Airport for a small fire, Morristown in two incidents in Morristown, one structure fire, one house fire. Thank you. Do you want to cover uh, anything for finance and uh, borough clerk while you're... Um in Rob's absence, or? Um, I have um, no report. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Utilities, Dr. Esposito. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, on December 6th, uh, Madison hosted the annual meeting of the Public Power Association um, here at Borough Hall. The uh, Public Power Association of New Jersey is a prestigious organization uh, that represents the 10 towns who operate their uh, the municipal electric utilities. Um, and it takes me great pleasure um, to um, mention Jim Burnett was un unanimously elected as president of the Public Power Association. So congratulations to Jim um, and a job well done. The um, electric department has been continually repairing the storm related uh, damage throughout town. Um, I will give my continued special thanks to the Electrical Department as well as the uh, DPW for their tireless efforts in restoring and maintaining our infrastructure after Sandy. Um, the Electrical Department wanted to uh, maintain normalcy in town, so um, they took some time away and to put up our annual Christmas tree. So thank you to uh, all the gentlemen um, and our electric, uh, and as well as our DPW. Um, Waverly and Lincoln Place has been recently designated as a great place in New Jersey 
uh, by the American Planning Association of New Jersey, um, which is a, a great accomplishment um, for that section of town. Um, the, um, the American Planning Association is now submitting an application to have Waverly and, and Lincoln Place designated as a great place in America. So um, that's um, uh, it's a, a, a great uh, accomplishment between our designing and, um, and our uh, utilities of those uh, two areas in town. And my last thing is that uh, I'll just send my congratulations to the Madison Dodger uh, high school varsity football team. Uh, being a Dodger myself, uh, it's great pride. Uh, and seeing them go three, uh, three years in a row with three um, um, uh, championships, and it reminds me of the days, uh, early days of uh, Coach Monica uh, back in the uh, mid to late 60s, uh, where they uh, went to uh, four years of um, uh, championships. So uh, congratulations to them. Thank you, Thank Mayor. If I remember, we had the score for four, strive for five, and the blitz for six uh, t-shirts back then. So maybe, maybe again. Uh, Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Links. The Department of Public Works reports that they are on their last round for leave pickup and are in the middle of removing 45 stumps and grinding 10 more stumps following Hurricane Sandy. The Engineering Land Use Services Department Capital Project Status Report is as follows. The Sampson Avenue Improvement Project construction target is early spring 2013. The Rosedale Avenue Improvements appropriations must be completed prior to bid and the target for bidding is mid-January 2013. We anticipate bidding the Green Avenue Reconstruction Project by April 2013. Other than the final paving, PSE&G has completed work on the Main Street Gas Main Project. A community meeting was held with PSE&G on November 28th to discuss concerns with the Rosewood, Crestwood and Linwood gas mains. They agreed to replace the existing gas main, and the project is currently in progress. The Madison Recreation Complex was awarded the Municipal Construction Project of the Year by the New Jersey Society of Municipal last week, and the Borough Engineer, Staff and former Mayor Holden were in attendance to receive the award. The Madison Recreation Complex has undergone a surveyed stakeout of proposed fence lines for compliance with the JDP requirements pursuant to recommendations by PK environmental consultants. A completed recreation and open space inventory was completed by staff and sent to Greenacres program with state payment vouchers to advance state reimbursement of committed funding. The Treadwell pump station revision specifications and the specifications and applications for the permanent stabilization of the channel in Bellowitz Park will be completed by the end of the year. Please refer to the municipal website for general announcements about current construction projects and the engineering website for additional details about our projects. The Department of Land Use Services wishes the public a safe, secure and happy holiday season. Thank you. Community Affairs, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, Hurricane Sandy's still in the news, and uh, everybody, oh, there was a good turnout uh, last week for Union Beach. Uh, the Senior Advisory Committee is continuing to address Union Beach, and they have what they call the Knitters and Crocheters Club, and what they've done is a number of organizations have joined with them to uh, actually put together some winter clothing. These people lost everything and they need warm clothing. Uh, some of the organizations that have worked with them are the Thursday Morning Club, Shabbat of Southeast Morris County, St. Vincent's Church, and the Madison Public Library. Now they're going to, going to continue to this effort. Uh, there's a lot of people down there that need more and they're going to be using the Blue Pearls email list, so be on the lookout for that, all right? Okay, from the DDC. Uh, they're asking that people Please remember to shop Madison during the holidays. You can purchase a $50 gift card at Kramer's Carpets for $45. Um, every gift certificate you purchase, the DDC will donate $2 toward Union Beach Hurricane Relief. Uh, they also want to announce that the prize patrol is back. Uh, they, say, they tell you to wear your Shop Madison buttons. Uh, if you're spotted in town with the button, and a shopping bag, you could be the shopper of the day and win a gift certificate. 
And then finally, uh, what you're going to notice is some people, some borough employees doing some digging around uh, downtown. They're going to be putting up some test poles for an artist's exposition, exhibit. Uh, these poles will be, I guess, you know, anywhere from, you know, Jim Ho just say about eight to 10 feet tall. And on the top of them, the artists are going to put paintings. They'll be winter, they'll be weatherproof, and they'll be on display at the borough. They're going to be putting up some test poles, and that should all, if all goes well, that should happen this spring and summer. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Health and Public Assistance, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, there's a lot going on down at the, uh, the health department, and one of the great accomplishments is that um, all the 2013 cat and dog license applications are now on, on the health department website. Um, you just have to go to forms and applications. You can download the form, fill it out uh, right on the computer, and then print it and mail it to the uh, health department. There's also a new page on the health department website that's specifically designed for retail food establishments. On there, you can also download the 2013 application, as well as the information for a new food handlers course that is being offered. And the 2000, and in 2014, Food Safety Award of Excellence program. Uh, the Food Safety Award of Excellence is for 2014, because they have to fulfill the requirements in 2013 to be eligible. There's a certain amount of hours and classes that um, the establishments have to go to. Um, at this time, we're not equipped to take the payments online, but I'm looking at Jim Sanderson, and I just know that he'll get that done later on in 2013. Um, he's very good at doing stuff like that. So um, also, um, Lisa Gullawan did uh, me to mention what the Madison Health Department is doing, uh, assisting with the Union Be uh, Beach Project. Uh, the department is donating over 100 masks for volunteers and staff to use when, um, when they're uh, down at Union Beach to work on the cleanup, especially on, uh, if, it's, if you're working on, I guess, some of the 40 houses that have debris and whatever. Um, the department has also arranged with Walgreens Pharmacy and CVS Minute Clinic in Chatham uh, to provide DTAP vaccine, which will assist in protecting volunteers from tetanus should they be exposed. Anyone who goes to get the vaccine should bring their insurance card. However, anyone who does not have insurance should contact the health department to make arrangements to receive the vaccine. We have a certain amount of the vaccine and uh, we're willing to um, uh, help the volunteers. This is um, just another uh, good thing that Madison uh, departments uh, do. So um, if you feel that you need, if you need to go down to Union Beach and you want to get this vaccine, please call the health department. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Communications and petitions. Uh, yes, Mayor. Three have been received. An email received November the 27th from Rob Bazarel of Glen Wild Circle regarding a community theater. Another email received December 5th from Sean uh, Murphy of Glenwood Avenue regarding uh, debris collection. And an email received December 5th from David Williams of Highland Avenue regarding the Union Beach relief efforts. Thank you. All right, this is the first of two invitations for discussion. This is when the, uh, an opportunity for the public to uh, comment or ask questions on any of the items on the agenda discussions or resolutions only. Any ordinances that are listed, we will have a he hearing for today. So the agenda discussions include a lot of cancellations because this is the year, year end. So we have cancellations on completed capital improvement, outstanding checks and bank errors, grant Appropriation reserve balances, can't also uh, our 2012 corrective action plan, 2012 budget transfers, cancellation of accounts receivable, account for the uh, water utility operating fund, and then we will have the um, Borough of Madison Union Beach partnership update. With those uh, guidelines, is there anyone wishing to comment? If so, please step up to lectern, state your, state your name, your address, and please keep your comments at three minutes or less. Anyone wishing to comment? See, oh, yes. Uh, 
Richard Zipper, Green Wood Avenue. Uh, they mentioned in the paper that they were improving Rosedale Avenue. And I'm um, just wondering if part of the plan was to improve the site lines at the Fairview, Rosedale, Greenwood intersection. Uh, when the state built that bridge in 1989, they, uh, they failed to uh, make a, a good sight line. There, there was numerous accidents there in the beginning. Uh, and there are still no people who avoid that intersection. They drive around the block so they don't go through there. Is there any plans for that? Bob, can you uh, address? I know we we talked about striping uh, in, to create a better uh, lanes and all that. Sure, again there. Uh, st st step on up to this. We want to catch every word on our uh, video here. Thank you. Squeezing down the intersection is, uh, he said, closing down, which, I, that, that's, yeah, it's the same story. So you're squeezing it, so. Squeezing down the intersection with signage and striping, not with uh, hard structural right. improvements like the curbing, um, will actually improve the site distance. But yeah. there are some hard corners there to have to deal with, with the bridge abutments and the fencing um, and other installed improvements that the DOT had put in uh, when the bridge was created that are somewhat difficult to deal with. And so uh, we're trying to take this first step in terms of a, the most cost-effective way to, to make this intersection safer. And I think, uh, again, the mid-block crosswalks and the blue crosswalks uh, and traffic calming devices that we're installing at that location should uh, really uh, improve the situation for the residents. And an example of the value of squeezing down with just striping alone is if you go to uh, Central and Ridgedale, just that little bit of strip striping has, you know, keeps cars towards the middle where they get a better view, and that has uh, greatly improved the site there. So thank you. Anyone, anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the agenda or the meeting and move on to agenda discussions. Robert, starting with cancellation of completed capital improvement ordinances, and we'll just move right on through each of these. Questions? All right. Yes, Jean. Yeah. Um, no question regarding the ones that you have listed there. My question is regarding how many ordinances do we still have open, and um, the uh, amount unencumbered and the amount unspent. You you don't, have, Robert. You really don't have to go through that right now. It would be nice just to give us a report so we have some idea as to what. Uh, um, the list of warnings that are still open and also the reasons as to why they're still open. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, um, moving on to checks and bank errors. 
I think that's pretty straightforward. Barbara, I believe you made efforts to contact um, these individuals, right? Because there's some couple of tax refunds, and one of them is a pretty large amount. Yes. And they, you weren't able to. I know that you were contacting yeah, I, them. As I, as I, you and I discussed right. previously, people move, yeah. um, and it gets, it gets misplaced. Did you reach the M. Holden? Yes. <laughs> OK, very good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For $11. All right, thanks. thanks, just making sure. All right. <laughs> Moving on to uh, cancellation of grant appropriate, appropriation reserve balances. Easy for me to the, say. Uh, our order was uh, uh, had a recommendation in 2000, 2009 report uh, as a uh, recommendation to investigate the older grant reserves, make a determination as to continue recognition for the proper disposition, and I want to uh, continue to do that. and that's what I'm doing here. I've canceled uh, any grants uh, in the current year. I do not cancel. I do not cancel the prior year. In this case, I'm canceling 2010, 2009, 2008. Okay. Yes, come on. Um, Robert, I just have a, a question about this. Um, uh, just looking at Clean Communities Program, there's $14,000 in it and recycling tonnage. I understand the recycling is 34000 That's what we get. And it goes back into, um, you know, our, our surplus or our funds or whatever. Um, and I understand your reasoning for uh, canceling these, obviously. It's, uh, it's important to do. But I also think that moving forward, when we see, uh, you know, a particular department like Clean Communities, which is uh, DPW, having 14,000, it seems to me that we have a lot of projects in this town that $14,000 would be able to be helped. So I think that early on we have to kind of change our concept. Um, I mean, this is, this is money that's given to us. I think that we should be encouraging those departments to look for the projects, take care of what needs to um, uh, be done, and uh, utilize uh, the money. So somehow we have to think about how we're going to do that. I had a brief conversation with uh, Jim Burnett today about, um, but uh, that's $92,000 that you know probably could have gone into some really good projects in Madison. So I. What I'd like to say is, like going forward after this, you know, is just keep a better account of what's going on, and get back to those departments to see if we can, uh, you know, utilize all that money on projects. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, 2012 Corrective Action Plan. There were seven uh, recommendations. Uh, one is a uh, continuation from the last three years. We're going to continue to see that. Um, I've discussed this on several occasions with <coughs> Mr. Cody, Mr. Burnett, uh, and the department heads. Uh, we put the uh, corrective action in place. Any questions? Any on questions on any of the? Yeah. Um, number three. Yes. Um, this seems like it's a procedural um, issue that we need to fix. Um, the corrective action is great to have the um, to have you um, mm -hmm. delete the asset once they are auctioned off. But I think something needs to be added because you are not the one actually does all the work. If I remember correctly, it's the purchasing officer that will auction these items off, right? Yes. So a step need to be added for the um, purchasing officer to really notify the chief financial officer so the chief financial officer can take the next step to, to write that off. So... Well, I'm actually aware of when, when it happens, I just forgot. Okay. <laughs> so you always know when that happens, right? Okay, so we... Okay. We, this, so, the, the, the Steve Martin uh, yeah, yeah. CFO, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so that's not an issue that you are not informed. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So, we'll, we'll make sure we close that loop. 
Thank you. Okay. All right, anything else on the corrective action plan? 2012 budget transfers? So let me make sure that I under, understand regarding the police department. The police department over time needs fifty thousand dollars, right? So you you bring in twenty from insurance. Yes. Instead of bringing in thirty from the police department that you have on the second line. No, 30, 30, the fifty thousand is funded by the. 30 from police, and then... Right, so instead of moving the 30 to the overtime from the police expense to police overtime, so you did kind of a three-way thing. So, um, so in actuality, the police department was short 20 and not 50. Well, short 50, short 20 overall, yes. Right, just want, just want to make that point that they're not uh, short 50, they're only short 20. Correct. You were doing a three-way transfer. Basis, Thank you. Okay, anything. All right, and cancellation of accounts receivable for water utility operating fund. This is a very old stale balance. Uh, when the record auditor uh, brought it up, I immediately responded, yes, let's write it off. We can't trace it back to when it's been addressed. We can't trace it back to the accounts and I want off the balance sheet. 1600 okay. Any questions? All right, so for all of these, we have resolutions under the consent agenda. All right, thank you, Robert. Borough of Madison, Borough of Union Beach Partnership, update. I just want to uh, start off by thanking everyone again who attended the meeting here last Thursday. Another example of what a great town we live in and how towns partnering can really help out and make a difference. Um, and I, what we heard that in that meeting were the reasons for why we're partnering with the Union Beach. And I won't go into all the details, but if you go to the, our Rosenet website, you'll see the Union Beach homepage there or the uh, landing page for Union Beach and there's also a link to the video so you can see the whole meeting. Um, but one of the things I'm going to ask uh, Bob Landrigan to uh, give us some update of, of things that are going down there, going on down there, but one in particular is how this partnership is different than doing a collection and sending money which is also very much needed. But the story of what happened this past weekend with sending inspectors and electricians down there and how homes are now powered up. So Bob, if you can touch on that story and some other things on the update of how we're doing down there with the partnership. Sure. Um, first of all, Mayor, that, that, that was great. Great introduction to it because what happened at that meeting with all the people that showed up was very impressive. Um, the people down there will need things for their homes. That's that's down the road. Right now, they need their homes, period. Uh, you know, you'll see different stories about, you know, the condition of the town and whatnot, but these people need a place to live. Now, when the water came through, and a lot of these homes were affected by anywhere from two to eight feet of water, uh, their electrical systems were damaged. Uh, what the borough did, and they were very much appreciated, I'll give you a little side story afterwards, is before you can restore a electric to a house that's been affected by water, it has to be inspected. Because if you turn on the electric, this even happened in Madison during the hurricane, the house has to be sound to accept the electric. Um, we sent down uh, some of our own borough employees, 
and an electrician who was here before, and he went into some of the homes, and they did an inspection. And they said, you know what? This house doesn't pass the inspection, so the homeowner was upset. So I said, wait a minute. We have somebody here who can fix it. They fixed it. They went outside. They were in a borough of Madison truck. They were applauded. And then people said, could you come to the next house and to the next house? The goal is to get as many people back into their homes as quickly as possible. So that takes the burden off of the borough to provide housing and shelter for them. That's the key. In line with that, uh, we have to make sure that we have to give the homeowners the ability to make sure that their home is safe from mold. And that's another uh, challenge, and we're going to work with them on that. And I know that there are some private donors and organizations who are at this time wish to remain anonymous that are working to get health care set up down there. Uh, we're looking to rebuild the town to give these people good, safe homes to live in. Uh, this is going to be a long, arduous process. Um, I know that some other individuals who probably wish to remain anonymous at this point are also working to get some of their uh, police cars back. They lost all their police cars, their ambulances, their fire trucks. That town needs to be rebuilt, and uh, we're working toward that right now. Thank you, Bob. Ray, Jim, anything else to add, or council members? All right. Again, I want to thank everyone, the, the churches, school groups, individuals or council members that have uh, agreed to make this partnership possible. And another great little story that's coming up is the, the junior school is making a trip down there either Thursday or Friday this week, all volunteering to help clean up. And yes, they might be missing a day of classes, but I think as far as an educational experience and teaching volunteerism and how you can help others, that day for the junior school and for Union Beach will be invaluable. So I thank them for, for taking that leadership on that. Okay, ordinances for hearing. Okay, the ordinances scheduled for hearing were introduced by title and passed on first reading at a regular meeting of the council held on November 26, 2012. They were all posted and filed according to law and copies were made available to the members of the general public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for second hearing and ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 38, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $480,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for road improvements on Rosedale Avenue. I open the hearing for Ordinance 38, 2012. Anyone wishing to be heard on this ordinance, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 38-2012. Second that. Council discussion. Roll call vote. Mrs. Sukamoto. Uh, yes. Dr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Links. Uh, Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. I declare ordinance 38-2012 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 39, 2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $46,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for two HVAC units for the Madison Public Library. I open the hearing for Ordinance 39-2012. Anyone wishing to be heard on this, please step to lectern. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move uh, Ordinance 39-2012. Second. Discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Uh, Mr. Cat, uh, Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. I declare Ordinance 39-2012 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 40-2012, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $70,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a utility truck and accessories. I open the hearing for Ordinance 40-2012. Anyone wishing to speak, please step to the le lectern. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 40-2012. Second that. Discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Lynx? Uh, Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. I declare Ordinance 40-2012 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. 
And now we come to the second round of uh, invitation for discussion. And this is the round when you can speak on anything. And uh, please, rules please uh, uh, are still in effect, which means step up, step, state your name, your address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone wishing to comment on anything, please step forward. Sam. 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 Every once in a while we get a person that steps up to the plate, a relatively unknown person who wants to make an impact. This person was Donald Lamps. We had a person that was relatively unknown, took a step into the political arena got elected, and he followed all his convictions that he had when he got elected. He was a person of the word. He was a person of unblemished character. He was fair to all. I totally agree. And the things that he put his name to, he succeeded. And all these things including the friendships that were brought out by this, will continue for a long, long time. Don, thank you very much for being a friend, and thank you very much for all your service to the town of Madison, with the Recreation Department, all the different things that you accomplished, and you stuck with it from beginning and so on. Thank you. Well said, Sam. Thank you. A anyone else wishing to be heard? Thrilling, 
they're, they're meaningful, but um, perhaps not tainted. Uh, uh, so, and uh, the six of you will be very busy. So whoever has that assignment to take on a meeting every two weeks in the evening is probably not um, something that you would do automatically. But it presents an image to, in addition to any quality communication that may occur in that interaction, just the form of having the council liaison at the school district meeting, I think, uh, encourages the public to, to um, understand the working relationship between the two, to perhaps be more excited about their both town and district, uh, and to bounce ideas off of district people, district uh, leaders, and at least one council person at the same time. So um, I have come to encourage whoever takes on that liaison role to regularly, if possible, attend those meetings. Thank you, Tom, and I think that'll be very good. I think the importance we, through the Green Village Road School redevelopment, we've obviously been working very closely together. We've had the Shared Services Committee for several years. We kind of took a little break for that as we um, worked on the Green Village Road School pro project. We will get that. The Shared Services Committee will certainly be um, reappointed and uh, move forward, and I think it's good advice for whoever steps forward for the liaison position to you know, if maybe every meeting is a uh, challenge, but to at least make it there on a regular basis. So thank you for those suggestions. Suggestions. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Uh, yeah, we'll get uh, Carmen Pico first, and. said thank you Um, the beauty of the new Woodland Road is marred by this unclear portion, 
and I urge the council to include the funds in your resurfacing plan this year and to finish that job. And while on the subject of paving, Division Road between Main Street and Kings Road is in similar disrepair, I understand this road is shared by Madison and Chatham, and although an arrangement between the two towns was made to repair Brook Lake, Division remains narrow, crumbling, and bordering on dangerous. Uh, and I urge the council again to make sure to include the funding for the repairing of Division Avenue in your plans and finish that job. Uh, one more thing, while I'm here, during the hurricane and its after effects, Madison took charge of nearly overwhelming challenges and turned in just a top flight effort. I'm sure that many storm postmortems uh, will identify Madison as the finest in many of these efforts. From the hardworking utility hotline team uh, to the critically important Nixle alerts to the friends at MVAC helping uh, people recharge their batteries, and particularly the extraordinary effort to restore Madison's power sooner than any other area which was impacted as severely. Uh, while the efforts at cleanup and repair continue, I feel that recent about place concerning ranch and yard waste pickup has the potential to leave a bad taste in the mouths of residents. Uh, the town did pick up branches and tree parts of any any minimal <clears throat> size while the power was out, and until recently has not picked up anything in my area since power was restored. My street is now clear of leaves, but any tree branches, including those even cut to size for yard waste inclusion, and on the street since November 10th, have been left uncollected by leaf crews and are ignored weekly by the yard waste crews. And I am told I need to take it up with the council. So uh, whatever the reasoning, your decision amounts to a mid-recovery reversal of what was a policy, whether it was written or unwritten. And that now requires residents to pretty much manicure their yard waste in the month of December before you take it away. Uh, I find I find in telling the residents you will not be collecting the refuse of an historic storm unless it is gift wrapped is somewhat disingenuous uh, when you decide this nearly a month after they put that out uh, on the street and uh, in a form which you've collected in the aftermath of three distinct severe storms, uh, August, uh, Irene, the October storm, and then Sandy, uh, the first few days of Sandy. So I certainly don't want this situation to mar my impression of the borough's response to Sandy. I think it was extraordinary and for the most part was angry. My request is simple. I think that the council should approve one final round of tree branch pickups consistent with the efforts that were made right after all the storms of the last two years. This will be a strong final effort for you to put the damage of Sandy behind us and leave us all in the mood to continue to speak highly of your work to finish that job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. And anyone else wishing to be heard? And then, uh, Bob, you can, if, when you come up, if you can talk about the, the woodland. Uh, and seeing no one will, Bob will give you the, and we'll, we'll pet the concerns about the pickup. We will uh, pass that on and see what we can do. It's, it is the, um, as I pointed out before, the, f the first uh, few rounds of pickup, because it was part of the relief uh, or the cleanup effort, we get some level of FEMA reimbursement at this point. That will not happen. And so it's a matter of the, the manpower. We no longer have the crews in town that we were able to bring in to uh, help clean up, so it's, um, we're down to just right back to our regular manpower, so it is a challenge. Um, just as a reminder, you know, I, I, I heard, heard you speak of the challenge with getting ready, things ready for um, yard waste, but just a reminder of the residents, in order to take advantage of yard waste pickup, that uh, will continue for a few more weeks. Besides the right size, it has to be bundled or put in uh, barrels, so obviously, if, that's step one to, to help with the cleanup. Okay, Bob. Yeah, Mayor, uh, just uh, for information, Mr. Sullivan did contact me last week about uh, debris uh, and uh, branches and things like that in his front property that hadn't been picked up. Uh, Mr. Mays know about it. He also mentioned his concern about the balance of Woodland Road uh, project that remains to be done. And uh, I let him know as I will let you know as well. We got two prices for that last year, one from the uh, County Cooperative bid process and one from the general contractor that is working on Woodland Road at Samson Avenue uh, to complete a mill and overlay of the Woodland Road project running east. Um, the difficulty that we had at the time was that the contractor's uh, proposal, which was relatively competitive, it was a contract that we were having a great deal of problems with getting the project at Samson Avenue completed. 
And so uh, rather than give him additional work to complete uh, as uh, potentially an excuse not to complete <laughs> the Samson Avenue section of Woodland Road, we decided to take a buy on those prices and, uh, and move it into this year. I think that Miller Overlake project, as I recall, the price was in and around between seventy and eighty thousand dollars. So it's not a really significant project for the borough of Madison in terms of roadway resurfacing. And if we can get that as part of the capital budget this year, I think it makes sense to do as well as Division Avenue. And Division Avenue is a different situation where we've had uh, involvement from Chatham. Chatham was concerned that the public service reliability project had a lot of very large towers and foundations going in the ground and they didn't want a brand new road being run over by heavy equipment for a period of time. And so we also put that off a little bit, but we still have an agreement with Chatham Township to participate in the completion of the Miller Overlay project at Division Avenue as well. So both of those projects can move forward very easily, in my opinion, in 2013, as long as the budget doesn't pull too tight. So, but the, so, so the, the, the key takeaway, they are on, on the road project list and they will, they, they, they will not go away. Okay, thank you. For uh, helping out. And so, uh, one other thing that uh, didn't get mentioned earlier in your comments, Mayor, was that uh, New Jersey Transit has occupied uh, Elm Street now. Yes. And uh, so that's up. There's an announcement just to the general public that Elm Street is now closed at the bridge location so that New Jersey Transit can go in and make long, long awaited improvements to the Elm Street Bridge, which uh, that overpass has been degraded for as, you know, as long as I can. Uh, make reference to it, which is over 10 years at the stage of the game. And we've been on uh, in, in contact with them for that whole period of time, in fact, asking them for those improvements to be made. So it's very nice to uh, to get uh, New Jersey Transit to uh, to get the project and contract in line and have a contractor out there. And so it's a nice and responsible contractor, the same one that's working on uh, Kings Road right now. So he will complete that bridge in the next 90 days, and Elm Street Bridge will be closed for that period of time during the winter. And so we're really kind of looking forward to having New Jersey Transit get that work done. I think it'll be a big improvement, uh, both in both areas, uh, both Kings Road and Elm Street. So, and then the last item is uh, you know, many of the uh, people that have come up have uh, touched upon uh, characteristics of councilman uh, links, and uh, and I will say that as my liaison for the past two years, that uh, Don has had incredible consistency and uh, a really unwavering commitment to capital projects getting completed. And you know, the funny thing about capital construction projects is you don't pick up a phone and order something and that's the end of it. It's something that requires a lot of follow through. And, uh, and God bless him, Don has had a tremendous amount of follow through on capital projects here in the borough of Madison. And uh, uh, he, I mentioned him personally at the uh, awards hearing for the Madison Recreation Center. And uh, yes, it's, it's a little bit late in coming. I think we probably should have got the award in spring instead of the fall this year, Don, but uh, you know how I feel about you. And, uh, and in my opinion, the, the award is all yours. It wasn't earned by the staff, it was ordered by, earned by Councilman Links, and uh, I certainly appreciate his, his dedication, his follow-through, his consistency during the past two years working with uh, Lady Services and the rest of the staff. So, thanks again. Thank, thank you, Bob, for taking the time to say that. And I just want to make one additional comment about Elm Street. Um, if Sam was here, Sam Sorcell was here, I might have remembered to say something about it since he wasn't here. But the, the other thing is when a, when a road gets closed like Elm Street, any businesses on there really can lose a lot of their regular traffic. So I just encourage any Madison residents that need to run out for a little convenience item, a loaf of bread or something. Think about uh, Madison Convenience on Elm Street. He now has lost his through traffic of people stopping there. So if you're going to, you know, buy that winning lottery ticket or something, stop by there once in a while. Make sure Madison, he knows that Madison's thinking of him. So thank you on that. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And as being the last regular meeting of the uh, year, there is no introduction of ordinances. So we move on to consent agenda resolutions. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. 
All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. I move consent agenda resolutions R282-2012 through R296-2012. Second. Discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Mrs. Sukamoto? Yes. Dr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Links? Uh, Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. There is no unfinished business outside of having a great rest of the year. Uh, approval of vouchers. Okay. Public safety. Um, we've had some amendments to um, our list here. Public safety is $31,286.56. Health and public assistance, $3,344.15. Public works and engineering, $188,457.58. Community Affairs, $2,376.24. Finance and Borough Clerk, $2,898,295.71. And Utilities, $261,853.04. Amended total is $3,312,598.84. The total excluded. It excludes three vouchers. One police the one department public safety and two plus the two utility. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I move the vouchers for approval. Second. Discussion. Roll call vote. Mrs. Sukamoto. Yes. Dr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Links. Uh, Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. There is no new business outside of have a happy New Year, and we'll see you here on New Year's Day. Okay. Move to adjourn. Happy holidays, everybody. Have a great one. Thank you. Twelve, twelve, yep.